Hey everyone, I'm sat here stuck in my house once more, armed with more pasta than you can shake a stick at, or at least a stick of spaghetti at. But luckily I'm doing pretty well, which I guess makes me the opposite of most people's stock portfolios. But yes, welcome to April, named after the Latin word apero, meaning second. So in this, the second month of the coronavirus crisis, what's been going on around the world? Well, in America, President Trump's been making a couple of speeches, but the big news has been in the Senate where they're agreeing the details of a $2 trillion stimulus package for when everything's over. You know, the President often plays politics as if it's a continuation of his TV show, and in many respects it's interesting to see how he's literally upping the budget for the final season, which of course is an election season. You know, the fact that no one else is talking about a US election with only eight months to go is in of itself one of the more startling news stories to come out of the coronavirus. I think in the last week I've read more in the newspaper about Garfield the cat than I have about Joe Biden. In the UK, the Queen's also going to be making an address about national unity and such like, seemingly forgetting that things like togetherness and working together is probably what helps spread the thing in the first place. But keep calm, carry on and keep washing your hands. That's the important thing. Soapy water and wash your hands. It's all well and good, but I'm wondering if a government health minister will tell us when we're allowed to use the shower again and clean everything else, because frankly after three weeks the wife's getting a bit annoyed and the overpowering smell of hand sanitizer only covers up so much. That smell, of course, doesn't matter too much if you're working from home. Video conferencing is a great thing. I do wonder about how popular video conferencing will be in a couple of weeks' time, though, when nobody's had a haircut or had their colour retouched for weeks. But in China, they're not too bothered by that. They're too busy locking down the details of the official story of where we got to where we are. You know, that wet market selling pangolins and live bats, it probably was full of disease, but it certainly didn't help that there was a biomedical research lab nearby and that several key scientists in the know subsequently went, quote, missing. The authorities claim they have no idea where they went. Why would they? Why would an authoritarian state know where any of its people were? All the families, of course, look for answers in the office where they kept their research notes. Now it resembles that aisle in the supermarket that once contained paper towels, but nowadays contains nothing but empty shelves, floor cleaner and laundry detergent. But anyway, for now, I have to go. A friend of mine just texted to say he won the lottery. Oh, wait, apparently only a few dozen people left the house last week to buy tickets, so the jackpot was only £100. Hmm, better luck next time, I guess. Anyway, see you next week. Stay safe. If you like, please click subscribe.